Welcome back, Black Knight Scholars. Mr. Deegan here yet again. Please turn to your Unit 2 VidNotes packets. One man, a German monk, and sparked the Protestant Reformation. The Protestant Reformation. Let's break down this phrase. To protest means to fight against. Reform, to change the bad parts of something. Martin Luther wanted to change the Catholic Church and improve Christianity, so he used forms of protest against the powerful church. He wrote a series of complaints, 95 complaints, called the 95 Theses, and they argued that the Catholic Church was corrupt and needed to change. What did Luther say in his 95 Theses? Number one, he said, Christianity should be about salvation by faith alone, not works, just by faith. Number two, Luther said, everyone is equal under God, and the Bible is the ultimate authority. You should not have a pope or a priest who is above the other worshipers. Everyone is equal, said Luther. Number three, his third point in the 95 Theses said that everyone should be allowed to read and interpret the Bible on their own. You shouldn't have to have someone to tell you what is in the Bible. You should decide for yourself what the Bible says and how you're going to use it in your life. Today, a guest lecture is going to be taking you through the rest of the lesson. Mr. Max Finkston, a history teacher from study.com. When you ask a Christian, what is your religion? Their answer probably will not be, I'm a Christian. They are much more likely to say, I'm a Baptist, or I'm a Presbyterian, or I'm a Unitarian. In general, most Christians identify themselves with a certain denomination or sect of their religion. This variety is not unique to Christianity. There are several denominations of Islam, Judaism, Buddhism, and all the other religions out there. However, none can match Christianity for sheer numbers. There are approximately 41,000 different denominations of Christianity. Some of these denominations differ on fundamental notions. The Greek Orthodox Church does not try to convert non-believers, whereas evangelicals do little else. These denominations coexist peacefully. Churches of various denominations can be found within walking distance of one another. With all of these varieties living together in peace, it is easy to forget that about a thousand years ago, there was only one sort of Christianity allowed in Western Europe, and that was the Roman Catholic Church. Following the Great East-West Schism of 1050, which divided the Orthodox East from the Catholic West, the Roman Catholic Church held unchallenged sway over the hearts and minds of Western Europe. No one who challenged the supremacy of the Roman Catholic Church was allowed to draw breath for long. Anyone who tried to start their own church, or come up with their own take on Christianity, was labeled a heretic. Their property was seized, and they and their followers died in the most horrible manner available at the time. The dominance of the Roman Catholic Church remained unchallenged for nearly 500 years. Then, in 1517, a German priest shook the Catholic Church to its very foundations. His name was Martin Luther. Luther was not a rebel. He wasn't trying to destroy the Catholic Church or even start his own religion. All Luther was trying to do was to stop the Church from engaging in some practices that he considered unchristian. Luther's problem was with the church's practice of selling indulgences. An indulgence is a remission of punishment for sins. You can think of an indulgence as a get-out-of-hell-free card. The church had been in the practice of granting indulgences in exchange for good works and acts of piety for centuries, ever since Pope Urban II offered indulgences to crusaders in 1095. Luther questioned whether the church had the authority to grant such indulgences. He believed that the only true path to salvation lay through faithfulness to Christ and his teaching, 
not through adherence to the ideologies and dogmas of the Catholic Church. Yet Luther probably would not have made a fuss if it weren't for the fact that these get-out-of-hell-free cards weren't actually free. Earlier that year, in 1517, Pope Leo X had made an unconventional move. Leo wanted to rebuild St. Peter's Basilica in Rome, but he didn't want to spend his own considerable wealth to do so. This is not surprising, as Leo was a member of the wealthy Medici banking family, which dominated Florence. The man was more of a banker than a priest. Leo's solution was to begin offering indulgences in exchange for donations to the Basilica's renovation. While these donations technically counted as pious works, Luther saw them as simple payment. To Luther's eyes, the church was essentially selling salvation. He witnessed poor peasants giving up their life savings to buy an indulgence for a dead relative in the hope of saving their loved ones from the tortures of purgatory. All the while, the church grew ever richer. This was too much for Luther. Luther had read the Bible, something most people of his age could not do, since the only available translations of the Bible were in Latin and Greek. Luther saw nothing in the Bible that gave the church the right to charge people for their salvation. The church was supposed to be a spiritual sanctuary, not a marketplace. So, Luther set about writing 95 complaints with the church's greedy behavior. These complaints are now called the 95 Theses. On October 31st, 1517, Luther nailed his 95 Theses to the door of the church at Wittenberg and sent copies to the higher authorities of the Catholic Church. The posting of the 95 Theses is considered by many the beginning of the Protestant Reformation. However, it is important to remember that Luther was not trying to undermine the church. He was just trying to get them to stop making money off the business of salvation. Luther's 95 Theses spread across Europe like wildfire. Within two months, they were being read in cities across the continent. The next year, they were translated into German and printed on a massive scale, further fueling the controversy. Luther suddenly found himself at the center of the greatest conflict of his age. The Pope was not happy at having his scam with the indulgences exposed. He had Luther accused of heresy. A couple of years later, in 1520, the Pope wrote a letter to Luther, in which he banned any further distribution of Luther's 95 Theses, and demanded that Luther recant his heresy or face excommunication or being cut off from the church and its sacraments. This threat of excommunication was a big deal, since pretty much everyone believed that the only way to get to heaven was to receive the sacraments of the Roman Catholic Church. Since Luther did not think he needed the papacy to achieve salvation, he did not care if he was excommunicated. Luther publicly burned the Pope's letter and thereby broke all ties with the Roman Catholic Church. Yet the church was not done with Luther. The church decided to hand Luther over to the greatest secular authority in Germany, the Holy Roman Empire. In 1521, Martin Luther was summoned to the Diet of Worms, a conference of both religious and secular leaders held in Worms, Germany. Once again, Luther was commanded to recant his heresy. He refused. The upshot was that Luther was condemned. The Holy Roman Emperor, Charles V, published the Edict of Worms, calling for Luther's immediate arrest. Yet Luther's supporters would not let him be imprisoned. Instead, they spirited him away and hid him in Wartburg Castle. Not content to hide on the sidelines, Luther made good use of his exile. He spent his year at Wartburg writing various letters and treatises attacking the Catholic Church. His greatest achievement of the time was his translation of the Bible into German. Luther held the Bible as the highest authority, higher even than the papacy. He realized that so long as people could not read the Bible, they would continue to fall for the lies and deceptions of Catholic ideology. Luther's supporters smuggled his translation out 
and soon printing presses across Germany were cranking out copies of Luther's Bible. The publication had the desired effect. All across Germany, people started reading the Bible and began challenging the authority of the church. You are almost done, ladies and gentlemen, but before you are, please fill out the two summary questions. On and once you're done with that, you're finished for today. Until next time, this is Mr. Deegan, signing off.